ಶರಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದಾ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಆಲ್ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟ್ರೂ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾತ್ ಗುರು ಜೈನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ವಿ ನೋ ಆಸ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಬಟ್ he did not came as a human being on this earth allah because he also came with many many divine muktas from his aksarda and these muktas were the santo and devotees of bhagwan swami narayan's time bhagwan swami narayan came with many many santos like muktanand swami gopalanand swami nityanand swami gunaditanand swami brahmanand swami many many santos they were actually came here along with maharaj from aksardham why because without any preacher one can one cannot understand anything and that's why maharaj also if maharaj wish for the development of the satsang in countless millions of jews then merely by his sankal he can able to do everything but as he came here as a human form and that's why he desire to do everything according to the history according to the human nature and according to the law of the nature and that's why maharaj came with thousands of devotees and muktas from aksardham so that they can give his true knowledge and understanding to the people so that the other people can also be able to understand bhagwan swami narayan's glory and as one can understand bhagwan's true glory and greatness and by this understanding one can be able to liberate from the cycle of birth and death for this gunaditanand swami also says in his talk that if we got the attainment of maharaj but if we do not have such company of a sadhu then who will make us able to understand maharaj's glory and greatness no one because besides sadhu who can give us true knowledge regarding bhagwan's form because bhagwan's form is not like that of anything that is in this world but bhagwan's form is totally divine so if one cannot have seen that form or if one cannot have experienced that divine form of maharaj then how can that person be able to explain the same and exact form of bhagwan to others and that is why maharaj came with those divine santos those santos they also lived and behave like an ordinary human being they always try to hide their divine powers still many times they also for the liberation of others for the sake of many devotees the santo they also many times show their divine powers but mostly they try to hide their divine powers and that is why in our satsang to keep an association with the true ekantik sant that's the main thing because gunadan and swami describe glory of sant by giving an example just as a calf it comes to to its mother meaning to cow then he can he can enjoy the happiness or pleasure of the milk but anywhere else it cannot enjoy the milk in the same way 
as an as spiritual aspirant go to the santo bhagwan swaminarayan ekantik sant then one can enjoy the true and real bliss or pleasure of bhagwan swaminarayan's divine form now this is what the glory described in the scriptures and in reality many devotees and some non devotees they have many times question that now those santo those who had attained god realization or those who are higher or more progressive in the satsang they can be redeemed meaning they have already attained liberation or they may be near to attain liberation but for the ordinary devotees or for ordinary santo and bhakto in the satsang what is the way to attain ultimate liberation or god realization how they can also enjoy the bliss of bhagwan's divine form that is the question once bhagwan swaminarayan was stay and lived in the divine place of loyata india there bhagwan swaminarayan once sat near the bank of the holiest place in the loya that was the near the bank of patario kuo the divine well there maharaj and santo and some devotees they were seated there and bhagwan swaminarayan delivered the sermons at that time some farmers passed by the road so when they saw this assembly then at that time they asked maharaj maharaj now we are agree with your discourses we agree with your all of the principles and philosophy now you are true and as the santo the renunciant devotee they also true because they follow your each and every commands they have not a single or print of or a drop of desire for worldly attachment or worldly enjoyment and that's why they definitely be liberated meaning they definitely be attain the divine abode of god after death but we do not understand about the liberation of these household devotees because they not firmly or strictly abides by your commands now how they can be liberated then bhagwan swami ran say as they were farmers they have the stick in their hands and at this uh one end of the stick they have a small nail inside the half inside the stick and half outside so bhagwan swami ran asked that farmer okay i'll give you a reply but let me ask one question to you then he said okay ask me maharaj then maharaj asked him do you believe an iron can float in the water then that farmer laughing he said no maharaj even though we cannot learn anything we cannot study in the school still we understand that this is the practical things that iron or steel cannot float in the water then bhagwan swami ran again ask do you believe that a wooden stick or any wooden part can be float in the water then they said yes maharaj it's definitely floating in the water then maharaj uh, said do you do one thing please throw your stick into this well there was a water in, into the well and so the farmer throw his stick in water then maharaj say did you observe it it is floating in the water then the farmer say yes maharaj this is a wooden stick and that definitely can float in the water but maharaj said i am not talking about the wooden stick but i am talking about iron nail which is fixed with this stick then maharaj 
describe the principle uh, example and the principle maharaj said just as this iron nail is fixed with this wooden stick and that's why it can float it cannot be sink in water if you throw a small or big part of iron in the water it cannot it cannot be able to float in the water it definitely sink it definitely goes to the bottom of the water but this is a magic if you fix it with the wood then it definitely float in the water so in the same way my devotees is like an iron if they many times did not able to follow my commands by adverse circumstances or by any way but they are like they are like an iron nail but as they fix with the santo they have firmly attached themselves with the santo and that's why they can also be liberated after the death so this is what the greatness of santo and their association if we keep firmly association of the santo then we can also get benefit even more than that even bhagwan swami nar also says in the vachanamrut 54 of gurudev first chapter if a person maintains profound love towards the ekantik sant of god just as resolutely as he maintains profound love towards his own relatives then the gateway to liberation opens for him so if we want to open the gateway to our liberation then we have to develop or we have to maintain the same profound love towards bhagwan's ekantik sant bhagwan did not say here that one should maintain or one should develop profound love towards bhagwan's divine form or bhagwan but maharaj himself says one have to maintain such a form love only for ekantik sant then one's door for the liberation open and also maharaj says his ekantik dharma also can be developed so this is what the greatness of bhagwan sekantik sant and if we have love we have true affection for such ekantik sant like with your guru ji then we definitely even we by heart our heart accept that we definitely be at, uh, attain bhagwan swaminarayan's divine form even while alive even more than that once nityanand swami asked maharaj maharaj can a devotee who is of the lowest level eradicate his deficiency and become a devotee of the highest level in his very life or not then sri ji maharaj says just as one performs the mansi puja of god if one also performs the mansi puja of the idol bhakta along with god by offering him the prasad of god and just as one prepares a thal for god similarly if one also prepares a thal for god's idol bhakt and sows it to him and just as one donates five rupees to god similarly if one also donates money to the great sant then by performing with extreme affection such sim- then by performing with extreme affection such similar service of god and the sant who possesses the highest qualities even if he is a devotee of the lowest type and was destined to become a devotee of the highest type after two lives or after four lives or after 10 lives or after 100 lives he will become a devotee of the highest caliber in this very life such are the fruits of the similar service of god and his true ekantik son so this is what the vachanamrut fifth of vartal now this is only scriptural words but today most of the people they don't believe on only, only what is written in the scriptures they want some proof they want some incident there are th- thousands and thousands such kind of incident 
at the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan as well as today. But today we are going to listen one small incident. This incident also describes the glory and greatness of Bhagwan Swami Narayan Sikantik Sant. Just as in the Bhakta Chintamani, Sadhguru Niskuran and Swami read down many many incident which describe the glory and greatness of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. In the same way, these incidents they describe the glory of Bhagwan Sikantik Sant. Because such a Santo, they have the divine powers, but this incident they have the some incident have divine powers, but most incident they have not such divine powers. But still, Santo can be able to change someone's life into a perfect devotees of God only by their sadhuta, saintly virtues. Let me see. Bilkha is a village near Gondal in the Saurash region. And there was very dangerous person lived in the village. Munjasur was a charan and a terror in the region. He had all the vices. He would drink, eat meat and take opium. If he got an opportunity, he would not hesitate to kill someone. People tried to avoid him like poison. This is what Munjasur's background, his initial information. Now, you just think, if a people or if a person who never hesitated to kill anybody, any person, any animal, any bird, how he was. And even more than that, his only job is to kill an animal and bird. In the morning, after waking up, he went to the field or in the jungle. There, he killed a birds and animals and without backing even their meat or without doing any process on the killed animal or bird, he eats directly as a breakfast. After the breakfast, when there was a time of lunch, he again killed an, an another animal or bird. And again, without doing any process on that dead body of the animal or bird, he again, without even baking or cooking, he just ate. This is his daily, uh, daily routine. The same thing at evening time. And in many books, it was written that whenever he desired to drink water, even drink, uh, even he drink water very less. But more than water, he drinks a liquor. This was his history and the reality. But once, after killing many small small rabbits and put many rabbits into a bag and with a bag in one hand he had a bag in one uh, on a right shoulder he had a long hand gun and in this way he was just going near the river so that he can drink some water his clothes were stained with the bloods of those killed animal and he was going there for drinking water in, from the river. But near the river, there was some santo of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. They were sitting after having bath in the river and they were just meditating upon the divine form of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So Munja Suru, he saw the santo, the group of santo, from very distant, so he desired to go there. Because in his reason, he saw such kind of santo first time. So he went near, then he watched for some time. But this those santo, 
they were doing mansi puja because that was the time of waking bhagwan after the nap so after some time when santo completed their mansi puja and seeing pad like sarve sakhi and aaj mare old day so at that time as he was standing in front of the santo he was thinking in his mind i have never seen such kind of santo in this region because all their babas and they also use some uh so, and some kind of uh addiction like uh they many times even enjoy liquor or wine with me and many they have many other bad habits but this and to they are just doing meditate meditation and after completing meditation they are again starting to do prayers to bhagwan even more than that his heart feel something divine because of the presence of santo now after santo completing all the ordana pod and everything after that he asked to the santo who are you and why are you sitting here near the river and what are you doing right now what is the ritual i am watching from uh f- for some time just as you are uh, sitting in meditation position and you are closing your eyes meditating for some time after that you are singing some prayers what is this then santo explain him about bhagwan swami narayan and santo said we are santo of bhagwan swami narayan he uh, bhagwan swami narayan is manifest on this earth and they also say about bhagwan swami narayan teaching meaning his message after uh, giving some information regarding bhagwan swami narayan and his uh, glory and greatness and his niyams santo inform him about sadguru gunadithanand swami and sadguru krupanand swami santo said these two santo they are our leaders they are our senior santo so munjasur he decided to give up everything and merely by darshan of this santo when munjasuru came near to gunaditanand swami he just fell down and bowed down to swami and krupanand swami after that he even bowed down to all the other santo he said that gunaditanand swami asked him bhagwan ke was this invaluable human birth after getting this body which is very rare after getting this human body why are you doing this such kind of job like killing an animal even to hurt an animal or a bird or any other human being that was the grave sin written in the scriptures or bhagwan swami and also written in the shiksha patri that not to kill any living being not to kill even a small insect then again swami in this way explained to him about the scene because munjasur did not did not understand what is seen what is married even he did not understand that what he is what he was doing is the scene that's why gunadanand swami preach him about the scripture that in the scripture it is written that one should not kill an animal one should not eat meat one should not drink liquor and in this way gunadanand swami gave him true message of bhagwan swami narayan that our bhagwan swami narayan he gave us these kind of teachings and then after swami explain him the pain and punishment given to such kind of sinner in the hell in the jampuri now after gunadanand swami explain him this reality that this much pain and punishment will be given to such kind of sinners into jampuri then 
this manjasuru he decided to give everything he bowed down to swami and he said swami i want to give up all these bad habits to eat meat and killing animals and birds then swami said yes that's good then swami gave him niyam not to kill any animal even in any condition not to eat meat not to drink liquor or wine in this way swami gave him niyam and swami even garlanded a kanthi to him and after from the moment munjasur began to wear a kanthi he gave up all of his bad habits and violence and in this way a sinner had turned into a pious man swami changed his life now according to swami's instruction munjasur had already taken a bath from a river he thrown out the dead bodies he had in a bag of uh, small rabbits and now he had given up everything but he requested to swami swami please come to my home then swami said uh, we have our schedule is busy we are going uh, we have to go to gondal the nearest town and after that in a return we definitely will sanctify your home then munjasuru said okay swami that's fine then munjasuru went to his home even some meat and liquor wine many many such bad things even in his home he thrown out he cleans his home and after some time meaning after months or more when gunaditanand swami along with his some santo came back on the same way so gunaditanand swami decided to go there to munjasuru's village vilkha and in the village when gunaditanand swami and the other santo they entering the village then uh two shepherds they were coming they have the long heavy stick in their hands so the santo the junior santo they feel some fear because at that time whoever so swami are in santo they just without asking without say anything they just beat the santo and that's why some uh, junior santo they feel some fear but swami said don't worry about it when those two sefer they come near to swami then he one of them he ask amongst you who are the guru of munjasuru then all santo pointed towards gunaditanand swami and they said this is gunaditanand swami from junagar he is the senior sant amongst us and he is guru of all then the those both sefer they bow down to swami and while folding their hands they say swami you so you uh you did the great job because when this munjasuru was not become a devotee of yours then at the time he killed many many newborn goats we have many goats because we, we are a safer and we kept many many goats now uh whenever we have a newborn goat in our in our uh, our said then at the time this munjasuru and his some companion they enter at night inside the said and they came back with five goats at least two in both of their hands two were under the armpit and one in their mouth in this way they kill freshly born baby goat and even in this way we lost many many our uh god and we have 
to suffer for these losses but after he becomes your devotee then we we have no any tension we have no worry and we are also happy so in this way gunachidanand swami also their discourse deliver his discourse and by listening gunachidanand swami's words of wisdom all those safer and the other villagers they also become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan this is what the power of sant because such kind of tar is like person how he feel to change his life without uh, one who to a person one cannot say any single word regarding his bad nature that same person himself bow down to swami and himself said i want to give up all these bad habits he feel something divinity in his heart merely by santosh darshan this was santosh sadhuta meaning saintliness saintly virtues so even such kind of bhagwan sekandik santo even present today like puja guru ji there were many many incident we have seen we have listened in puja guru ji's life there are many persons they have many kinds of bad habits bad nature uh, many many addictions and only sometimes merely by darshan of puja guru ji they given up everything sometimes they listen puja guru ji's katha from cd and by listening those words they change their life many times even one has not even a single time darshan of puja guru and still they become a devotee so this all kinds of incident give us the glimpses of some small glories greatness of puja guru ji and in this way such incident give us the knowledge regarding the power of bhagwan swami narayan because one's son because the power bhagwan swami narayan's son has so if one only calculating such power or observe such power then one can definitely calculate the power of bhagwan swami narayan that if one's devotee if one's such a kantik sant can have such power then how much power bhagwan possess so in this way such kind of many other incident written in our scriptures we will continue it later on shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jay shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam hare madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swaminarayanam nilakantham bhaje ganeshyam maharaj ni jay